Group's founder and chairman, Thomas Pettifee. Thomas, good to see you again. Thank, thanks for joining us. My, my first question is, are you surprised and or disappointed not, not to be a part of the hearing tomorrow? Oh, no, I'm neither surprised nor disappointed. I, this is just fine with me. Just fine. <laughs> I, I, can, I can imagine. So what do you think will be the focus? Because there's lots of angles here, whether there was insider trading, whether the likes of Robinhood uh, hurt their customers and whether the likes of Citadel are abusing their power. What, what do you think is the key focus and the likely outcome? So what I would like to point out here that we have come dangerously close to the collapse of the entire system and the public is seems to be completely unaware of that including congress and the regulators so so let me explain to you that on on january 26th game had closed at 77 dollars a share the following day it closed at 148 the following morning on january 28th the stock opened at 355 and traded up to 480. At the same time, Game had 50 million registered shares outstanding and the short interest of 70 million shares. In addition, there were about one and a half million calls, which would call for 150 million shares. When the short when, if the shorts, uh, sorry, if the longs repay their margin loans and exercise the calls, their brokers would have had to be, would have been obligated by the rules as they are today to deliver to them 270 million shares while they on, by only 50 million shares existed. So when the shorts cannot deliver the shares, the broker representing the longs must, must, by the rules of the system, go into the market and buy the shares at any price, pushing the price into the thousands. So as the price goes higher, the shares default on the brokers. The brokers now must cover themselves. They push the price further up. So the brokers default on the clearing houses, and you end up with a complete mess that is practically impossible to sort out. So that's what almost happened. To avoid this in the future, the SEC needs to immediately call for reporting of short interest on a daily basis because they are currently only reported twice a month. And I think they should increase margin requirements on shorts by 1% for every short, every percent of short interest. That would solve the problem. This is a gaping hole so, that didn't had before because short squeezes are considered market manipulation, which is illegal. But so therefore nobody did it. But with these uh, social platform platforms, people can just chit chat and uh, suddenly a short right. interest emerge without pointing at any one person okay. who is guilty, right? So, so, Thomas, I mean, it, it's, it's extremely complicated, and, and they'll have to try to explain all this market structure in between some of the, the populist grandstanding from, from members of Congress tomorrow. But ultimately, who are you saying is to blame, if anyone, for what happened? No, it's nobody, nobody is to blame. There is a hole in the system that we immediately have to stop. There's a whole Which is in the short, short interest reporting? Short squeezes. Sorry? You're, you're saying that is the short interest reporting. That's, that's what was happening here? That was the problem? No, the problem was that the, the, there is no increased margin requirements at shor on shorts as the short inter interest increases. As a matter of fact, we, most people don't even know what the short interest is because it's only reported once every, twice every month. What, what portion, Thomas, of your trading uh, is payment for order flow? I, kn I know it's a smaller percentage than, than some of your oh, rivals. It's, 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 it's like 3%. Shepard Smith here. Thanks for watching CNBC on YouTube.